love you. All right, thank you all so much. So we're gonna open up our meeting now with a prayer, Reverend Jennifer, we're gonna ask you to open this year for us and this meeting. Thank you, over to you. Thank you so much, Lady Yvette Harris, thank you. Father, we come to you on the basis of your word, that when we come to you, we come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, we come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than that of Abel's. Father, we come to you to direct us and guide us. This is our first women's meeting for 2023. And for where we want to go this year, we cannot go without you, Lord. We dare not go without you. Lord, 2023 is a year of building, expansion, and growth as set before us. Lord, help us in this vision as kingdom women. Lord, the women who visit our platform night after night, oh God, Help us to regard them as your people and help us not to take their situations lightly. Help us that we may help others appropriately. Help us not to be critical nor judgmental, but to be loving, kind, and graceful. And we will handle each situation with the gravity that each situation deserves. Lord, as we serve others, we serve you. Help us in all we do to serve well. Lord, energize our president, Pastor Lolet Garrick. Energize our deputy, Sister Yvette Harris. Give them wisdom, strength, fortitude, courage, even when the going gets rough. Guide the executive, we pray, all the members of the executive, the leaders upon whose shoulders, mighty God, this women's ministry hangs. Lord, help them to shoulder this ministry that all will go well in 2023 and our women will find joy fulfillment satisfaction will grow will mature mighty god in grace in favor with god and with men lord may 2023 find us fully sanctified keeping our vessels whole that we may be able to reach out to others in the areas of their need. Lord, help us in our family situations, that our families will be blessings, conduits of blessings. Lord, that this ministry will not be a distraction, but one that aids us in our family life, in our church life, in our work life, in our school life, in everything we do. Help us, O oh God, that this ministry, Lord God, will go far and wide, not only for love and faith, but for distant shores and for all those who will log on, mighty God. We pray for the women in distant lands who may happen chance, my God, come on this platform. May their lives be transformed and renewed and be blessed, mighty God. May shackles be broken in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give over this year, 2023, to you in all aspect. And we ask you, Lord, for your wisdom in every part. And we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you so much, Reverend Jennifer Owens. And now we ask, okay, our scripture reading for tonight, our anchor scripture for tonight is 1 John 1 and 2. It says, dear friend, I hope all is well with you and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. That's a New Living Translation. I'll read another one. NIV says, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. That is our anchor scripture for tonight. We thank the Lord for his word. Now I ask Lady Tracy Ann Harris to introduce our speaker for tonight, who is Dr. Tendai Gentles. Over to you, Lady Tracy. Hi, good night, everyone. Good night. It's a pleasure tonight to introduce our speaker. Tendai Williams Gentle is a member of Love and Faith World Outreach Ministry and is actively involved in the youth ministry department. She has been a medical doctor for 13 years and presently practices as a consultant pediatrician at the Princess Margaret Hospital. Tendai Gentles is married and has a tremendous love for God. I present to you this evening our speaker, Tendai William Gentle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Back to you, Dr. Ten. Yes. Okay, good night, everyone, and thanks for the invitation to do this presentation at this lovely occasion. Okay, so tonight the topic is health matters. And my approach is the fact that, or the proverb, proverb that says prevention is better than cure. Now the outline of the presentation is, I will go through an introduction, mention a few common illnesses and how we can prevent them and give a brief conclusion. Now what is health? According to the World, the World Health Organization, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Now, diseases can be divided into two broad categories. You can have those that are communicable or those that are non-communicable. So non-communicable diseases are those diseases that are mostly chronic, so they are long-lasting, and they're usually not passed on from one person to, the, to another. They're usually associated with our lifestyle choices. Whereas our communicable diseases are those that are passed on by organisms, whether it be bacteria or viruses spread from one person to another. Some information from the World Health Organization that was um, put out in September of 2022. Now, Non-communicable diseases kill 4 to 1 million people each year, which is equivalent to 74% of all deaths globally. And each year, 17 million people die from non-communicable diseases before age 70. Most of these deaths are as a result of heart diseases or cardiovascular diseases. Now, tobacco smoke, physical inactivity, the use of alcohol, and unhealthy diets, they all increase the risk of dying from these diseases. To help in curbing these diseases, detection, screening, and treatment are a few measures that can be employed. So as mentioned before, non-communicable diseases are chronic. They are long lasting, and they are as a result of many factors. Genetic, it could be passed on from your parents to you. Physiological, environmental, it could be as a result of the, um, the dust, uh, particles in the environment, behaviors which include our dietary practices or even for inactivity. There are four main types of these diseases, cardiovascular, which includes the heart attack or your, cardi or your MI, stroke, cancers, chronic respiratory diseases like her asthma and diabetes. 
So on the contrary, as mentioned before, the communicable diseases now are these that are passed on from one person to another, whether it be via contact with bodily fluids, breathing in an airborne virus, or being bitten by an insect. Some ways in which these diseases can be passed on include physical contact with an infected person, such as droplets in the case of your influenza or your flu, contact with contaminated services, such as in like blood or even water. As mentioned here, we know Haiti, which is closely bordered to Jamaica, is currently having a cholera outbreak, right? So basically contaminated water, ingestion of the, that can cause cholera, severe vomiting, severe diarrhea that can actually claim lives. So it's very important to be aware of that. Being bitten by mosquitoes in our area, um, dengue virus, um, malaria and yellow fever can be passed on by these means and by travel through the air in the case of tuberculosis or even measles. Now, currently we're actually in the flu season. So in Jamaica, the flu season starts from as early as October to March of the following year. And we're, in a, and we're in this season right now. So influenza or the flu virus is a virus that is um, infection of the nose, the throat, the lungs, which is all part of your respiratory system. Now, most persons get rid of the flu by themselves, but some persons can actually die from the flu. So persons who are at risk of dying from the flu are those who are very young, so less than two years old, those who are very old, those who are 65 years old, those who, lives in, um, who live in um, homes like your nursing homes, those who are pregnant or plan to be pregnant during the flu season, those who have weakened immune systems. So your weakened immune system, again, is your very small babies, um, your older people, your elderly persons, and those persons with illness like HIV. Those persons who have chronic illnesses like your asthma, heart disease, kidney disease, liver disease, and diabetes, and those persons who are obese. So we see that even though the flu can be common and can be easily gotten rid of, there are some persons who can have complications and die from it, and hence, we need to know about the flu. Now, the symptoms include things like your fever, aching of your muscles, chills and sweats, headaches, dry or persistent cough, shortness of breath, tiredness and weakness, runny or stuffy nose, sore throat, among others. So according to the US Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, they recommend that the flu vaccine be given annually to everyone older than six months of age, right? So the flu vaccine is good because it can lower your risk of getting the flu, right? Or if you get it, it might not be as serious as if you hadn't gotten the flu vaccine. So besides vaccination, there are other ways that can prevent the virus from being acquired by someone. Washing your hands at least for 20 seconds, or if not, using your hand sanitizer. Avoid touching your face. Cough. Cover your cough and sneeze. So you can cover your cough and sneeze by using, using a tissue or even sneezing into your elbows or coughing into your elbows. Ensuring your surfaces are clean and to avoid crowds because where there are crowds, there's an increased risk of the spreading of this virus. Now, going on to my non communicable diseases. Now, the few I will mention tonight are hypertension, diabetes, breast cancer, cervical cancer, and for the men, prostate cancer. So hypertension, as we all know, is our elevation of your blood pressure, and it's a serious medical condition that affects many organs, including your heart, your brain, your kidneys. Now, it's estimated that 1.28 billion adults aged 30 to 79 years old worldwide have hypertension, and 46% of these persons are unaware that they have it. Less than half of these persons are diagnosed and treated and one in five adults with hypertension have it under control, which is only 21%. Now of note, hypertension is a major cause of premature deaths. So premature means early, means we could have prevented it if we had proper care. Now, hypertension is diagnosed by doing your blood pressure on two separate occasions, once you are arrested. And once your blood pressure is more than 130, the top value over 80, the bottom value, you are said to have hypertension once these values are um, elevated on two occasions. So once this is so, your diagnosis is hypertension, even if you had not been diagnosed prior. 
Now, for hypertension, there are some risk factors or there are some things we can do that can avoid us or prevent us from getting hypertension. And these are avoiding unhealthy diets. So the risk factors for getting hypertension that we can avoid are avoiding unhealthy diets, such as excessive salt consumption, avoid consumption of saturated fats. So these are things like cheese. <clears throat> One second, excuse me. Um, your trans fats, which can be found in your things like your pizza. Um, when you eat low food serve vegetables, you're at risk of having hypertension. If you are inactive, you're at risk of having hypertension. If you consume tobacco or alcohol, if you are obese or overweight, you're at risk. And these are things, <clears throat> sorry, that you can avoid. But there are some things that you can't avoid that puts you at risk of hypertension. That is, if you have a family history of hypertension, if you're above 65 years old, and if you have additional illnesses such as diabetes or kidney diseases. What are the symptoms of hypertension? Usually there is none. Hypertension is said to be the silent killer. There are no symptoms. And that is why we need to be very mindful of this illness because you can be walking, feeling nice, your blood pressure is sky high and you aren't aware. Now, when you have symptoms, it means that your blood pressure is very high. And in these cases, you can have things like fatigue, nausea, vomiting, confusion. You can feel anxious. You can have chest pains. Sometimes you can present with seizures in a coma or even having a heart attack when it's very bad. So how can you prevent this? Because our motto today is prevention is better than cure. So we have to reduce our salt intake to less than five grams daily. Eat more fruits and vegetables. Be more physically active, at least 30 minutes per day, at least five times per week. Avoid smoking. Reduce alcohol consumption. Limit those foods that are rich in saturated fats and those with trans fats. Now, our next um, disease is diabetes. As you all know, is characterized or by the elevation of our blood pressure. Now, over time, it has very serious side effects, causing damage to your heart, your blood vessels, your eyes, your kidneys, and your nerves. Now, there are actually two types of diabetes, type one and type two. Type one is basically that is present most of the time from you are born. And there's some genetic um, association down there. And usually it's lifelong and lifelong treatment is required. But type two is what is acquired and it's based on your lifestyle, your eating habits, your lack of inactivity. These are some risk factors for type two diabetes. Now, the symptoms include, you might want to urinate more often. You might be drinking more water. You're always hungry. You might be um, losing weight. You might have problems seeing or be more fatigued. And most of the time, these are with persons of type one diabetes. Whereas type two now, you may not have so many of the symptoms in contrary, you might actually have weight gain because, again, of your diet. So how can you prevent type 2 diabetes? Because as I mentioned before, type 1 is not necessarily preventable. How can you present, prevent type 2? Exercise regularly. Again, eat healthy. Avoid smoking. Control your blood pressure. For persons who have high blood pressure, they are at risk for having diabetes. So control your blood pressure. They have high cholesterol control your lipids. So based on these two diseases, we are seeing that our lifestyle alone can alter the path we go in diabetes and hypertension, especially once we have no underlying family history to put us at risk of developing these two diseases. Now, this is a woman's um, conference or um, yeah, conference. So it is pertinent to mention a few diseases that affect women. One such is breast cancer, which is the cancer of the breast in the lining cells of the ducts and lobules in the breast tissue. Now in 2020, there were 2.3 million women diagnosed with breast cancer and 685,000 deaths globally. At the end of 2020, there were 7.8 million women alive who were diagnosed with breast cancer in the past five years making the world's most prevalent cancer around. Now, approximately half of breast cancer develops in women who have no risk factor other than being a woman and 
But there are also some risk factors that we see in cancer, and you have to go through radiotherapy, and that puts you at risk for developing breast cancer. Now, there are also certain genes that puts women at risk of breast cancer that can be passed on. And when they are found to have these mutations in their genes now, there are different um, strategies to remove the breast to actually cure this illness. Now, behavioral choices and with interventions that reduce the risk of breast cancer are some, they are few. They have noted that if you breastfeed for a long time, if you are very active physically, if you control your weight, avoid smoking, avoid drinking, avoid the use of prolonged hormones like your contraceptives, and avoid excess radiation, there's a slight chance to decrease your risk of um, acquiring breast cancer. What are the symptoms? The symptoms include a breast lump or a thickening. Now we must know that this breast lump can be painless or painful. A painless lump is not a good thing, not because that's paining you, it's good. Usually when it's like that, it's a high possibility it may be cancer. So you need to check it out. If there's alteration in your size, shape, or appearance of your breast, you know your breast as a woman. And so any alteration is not normal. If you're seeing any dimpling, any redness, right, or pitting in the skin of your breast, that is not normal. If there's changing your nipple appearance or um, surrounding areola or any discharge, right? Once you're not breastfeeding, any discharge from your breast is not normal. As a result now, as I mentioned, the topic tonight is prevention. So how can we screen, how can we check for breast cancer before it actually is um, start having symptoms of it? So we can do several things. We can do our breast exam, which we do on a monthly basis, ideally three to five days after the start of your period, because at this time, there are not lots of lumps and bumps that are normal. And if you do it at the same time every month, you can be able to say, okay, something is wrong here. You can also use breast ultrasound, mammogram, which is a specialized x-ray to look at your breasts, a breast MRI, breast biopsy, or even staging. So who gets screened for breast cancer? So women at which average risk for breast cancer are those persons who are 40 years or above. And once you reach age 40, you must get annual mammogram as long as you are in good health. So nothing else is wrong with you. You are 40 years old. You need to start getting your mammogram and continue every single year. Now, those persons at higher risk for breast cancer, because they have the abnormal gene as mentioned before, you can do it at age 25, all right? Annual MRI, <clears throat> annual mammogram, alternative with MRI at six months interval, age 30 and above. If you have a history of radiation therapy for a different cancer, you should do it eight years after the radiation, but not before age 25. Annual MRI at 25 to 30, annual mammogram with alternate MRI at six month intervals at age 30 and above. Now, if you have a risk of breast cancer because of a strong family history, you should have your screening done 10 years before your relative. Say your mom had breast cancer at age 50, or at age 45, by age 35, you should start doing your screening, but not before age 30, and no, not after age 40. At this point, annual mammogram should be done, MRI might be indicated. So that's a brief information for um, breast cancer. Now going for cervical cancer. Now, so that your cervix is basically the mouth of your womb. So um, worldwide, Cervical cancer is the fourth most frequent cancer in women with an estimated 604,000 new cases in 2020. Women who have HIV are six times more likely to develop this illness compared to those women who do not have HIV. Now, a large majority of cervical cancer is due to a virus called the human papilloma virus. Now, the human papilloma virus or HPV is the most common viral infection of the female reproductive tract. And most sexually active women and men will be infected at some point in their lives. And some may be repeatedly infected. Most are cleared, 90% of those kids are cleared. 
how do these persons present? They might have irregular bleeding or light bleeding in between their periods, or they might have met, they might have gone through menopause and start to bleed again, or they might be having bleeding during sexual intercourse, abnormal vaginal discharge, and sometimes foul smelling. So any of these symptoms are not to be taken lightly at all. Why? Because there are things that we can do to prevent um, cervical cancer. And one of the things is vaccination. There are actually four vaccines that have been approved by the World Health Organization to protect against the HPV, HPV virus, all right? And this virus causes at least 70% of cervical cancers. Now, there are several clinical trials or um, surveillance done to say that these vaccines are actually safe to prevent HPV infections and cancers overall. Who gets the, the vaccine? So you want to give the vaccine before persons are at risk of getting the virus, all right? So ideally from nine to 14 years old, which is when most children or most teenagers would not have been sexually active. You should offer it to both boys and girls. And besides that, you need to educate um, your as early as possible, boys and girls about safe um, sexual practices. Of course, we don't want any of this in our boys and girls, but we need to um, tailor our health education based on the age, et cetera. Now, from 30 years of age for women in general population 25 and living with HIV, there are other screening protocols. And this is what we call a pap smear. I'm sure quite a few of us are aware of what is a pap smear. It's basically, again, a smear of your, your cervical region where the cancer affects that is sent for testing to see if there are cancerous or precancerous cells. And so intervention can be done. When do you have your pap test done? Once you're at less than 21 years old, there's no need for testing. But between 21 and 30 years old, you should have your test every three years. Once you're between 30 to 60, 65 years old, every three years, as well as your HPV testing every five years. Once you're more than 65 years old and otherwise well, there is no testing needed. Now, the next um, cancer I'll mention is prostate cancer. And this is basically, um, even though I'm not sure how many men might be in a platform, we all have um, fathers, brothers, uncles that might be beneficial from this information. So your prostate is a gland that is function uh, that, is, that is found, sorry, only in men. The small walnut-shaped gland in males that produces the fluid that nourishes and transports the sperm. Now it may or may not have symptoms of prostate cancer in the early stages, but in more advanced um, cases, you might have symptoms, problems urinating, decreased force in the stream of urine, blood in the urine, blood in the semen, bone pain, loss of weight or erectile dysfunction. Now, who is at risk for prostate cancer? The older you are, the more you are at risk for those persons more than 50 years old. Black persons are shown to have um, a higher risk of prostate than other races, having a family history and being obese. So how can you screen? By doing a digital rectal examination. This is a very simple, yes, maybe uncomfortable examination that can be done in your regular doctor's office. And it will tell us that the consistency of the prostate, if it's enlarged or so, and might need to be have um, for the investigation. Another test that can be done include your PSA or your prostate specific antigen which is produced by your prostate gland and it actually is found in the blood. And when it's elevated, it can indicate that the person may have prostate cancer. There are other diseases of the prostate that may have elevation of your prostate um, or your PSA. So your clinician or your doctor will look at everything to ascertain if you are indeed as, at risk of having prostate cancer. Now, I mentioned before that um, health is not only your, your physical health, also emotional. So emotional health is about how we think and feel. It's about our sense of well-being, our ability to cope with life events, and how we acknowledge our own emotions, as well as those of others. Now, how can we help our emotional health? Again, develop healthy physical habits. You know, when you are healthy, when you're exercising, you feel good, right? Sometimes when you're not healthy, when you're not exercising, you feel just sluggish and, you know, sad. So 
exercise not only help help your physical health prevent diseases it also helps your emotional health take time for yourself each day now the world is everything is so busy and you always have something to do so taking time just to relax can help you to unwind and decrease the stress of life look at your problems in a different angle um life is such that as you get older you realize that we all have problems but you can look at it and see what good can you learn from it and count your blessings instead of looking at it in a negative attitude practice gratitude every single one of us has something to look from life and be grateful for despite of the storms that all of us are going through at one point there is something we can look so when we look at the positive aspect of life it really helps our emotional health and even our physical health exploring our beliefs so as christians we know that we have a purpose right and when we know we have a purpose that gives us a drive to continue you know to go on tap into social connections a community or a good support system is very important for our emotional health when one person is down another person is able to lift that person at that time so what the word of god says now it's surprising that the same scripture i have at first is what was read prior um third john one to two it says beloved i pray that you may may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. So we can see that, that the word of God, that God wants us not to be only healthy spiritually, but to be healthy overall, right? Our body is a temple of God. That's where God dwells. And if we're not healthy, we can't live long. And if we can't live long, we can't do what God has put us on this earth to do. And hence, good health is important. The second scripture is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. It says, for bodily exercise, profitable for a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of life that the which is now and that which is to come. What I see from the scripture is telling us that exercise is good, but let's not be preoccupied with our physical body because it's only good for us in this life. So we must ensure the godly part or the, the, the spirit is nourished that will benefit us in this life and the life to come. But God is saying, nevertheless, take care of yourself for this season so we can live long the word of god also say proverbs 70 22 a cheerful heart is good medicine but a broken spirit dried up the bones and so we can know if you're sad and just sulk up as much as you might it affects you it affects you but when you are cheerful when you are happy the word of god says it's good medicine and it's proven also to have to be good medicine so here we are saying god is saying take care of yourself right and we see that the, the the illnesses mentioned before there are things we can do to cause premature death which basically means that before time and the word of god also says as a man sow it he reap it so as much as we might be praying every single day if we are eating our salty foods not being active all right eating unhealthy what we sow we will reap so in order for us to live long and do all the great things God is asking us to do, we must prevent so that we can avoid, we don't have to go to cure. Prevention is better than cure. But what if you did not prevent and you have an illness because we're not perfect and things can happen? What if you had some things passed on to you from your mother or your father? What the word of God says in Jeremiah 33, 6, Behold, I will bring in health and cure. I will cure them and I'll reveal unto them abundance of peace and truth. And so this encouragement to say, despite of what we are going through, God wants us to prevent. But if we don't prevent, he's a good God that is still able to cure us. But again, we must have faith, again, for us to be cured. So what is the conclusion of this matter? Um, take care of yourselves. Eat healthily. Exercise regularly. Take the precautions when necessary. We see that we are in the flu season, but be, uh, be made aware COVID is still around. It's still killing our elderly, and it might affect you, but you might be seen a person without your mask, touching all over, and somebody who is very sickly next to you gets it and dies. And so sometimes we take our precautions, not only for ourselves, but for someone else. Follow the screening protocols. You know, you are a woman in your 40s, do your mammogram. 
You can't wait until you are 60 or 50 and you feel a lump and then you start to complain. You Once you know now, you need to do, apply your knowledge. And so screen, have your own doctor, right? Go to your health center or have your own doctor, do your checks and follow your, the doctor's instruction. But above all, my encouragement is have faith in God for he is the ultimate healer, restorer, and way maker. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Tinda. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, if you could just take the screen down first. That would be okay. Lady Jade, I'm gonna hand over to you for the Q&A. Are you there, Jade? Jade, are you there? Thank you. Okay, you're on mute. Dr. Tenda, we're gonna ask you if you could stop the share, the screen share. Okay. We're gonna to go to Q&A. Thank you so much. No problem, you're welcome. Right, we're gonna to go to Q&A. So we're asking you to stand by for some questions if possible. No problem. All right, Jade, over to you, Jade. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We had a very informative presentation by our Dr. Tenda. If you guys have any questions, or you would like her to elaborate on something else, go ahead and do so. You can do so in two ways. If you're on Facebook, you can go ahead and put it in the chat and it will be read. If you're on Zoom, you can go ahead and use the raise and feature, or you can just drop it in the chat or on mute and we'll, she'll answer those for you. Or if you don't have a question, you can tell us a statement. Um, in the chat, Andre is asking, how can we maintain the health of our kidneys? Okay, um, <clears throat> there's several things that we can do. What we need to understand is that for number one is, there are some kidney disorders that persons are born with. Um, there are some that are as a result, again, of illnesses like your diabetes or your hypertension. And so if you deal with the matter of your diabetes and hypertension, um, again, diet, exercise, and taking your medications, that can affect your kidneys. But sometimes because your kidneys aren't working, you might have to decrease the amount of water you take because your kidneys normally get rid of water and the waste. So if your kidneys aren't working, it can't get rid of the water. If you drink too much water, you are in problems. If you eat too much things that, that produce waste, much like your proteins, those can cause more problems as well. So you need to be able to, um, it's based on your the, the underlying cause. So overall, if it's affected already, you might have to follow your doctor's orders and decrease the amount of fluid you take. Be careful of what you eat in like not too much proteins, but to prevent it, um, prevent hypertension, prevent diabetes, or if you have diabetes and hypertension, take your treatment so you can control those and those will not affect your kidneys. Okay, thank you. So much. I'm not sure. You're going to mute, Jade. I don't know what's going on. Um, I don't know if that answered your question sufficiently. Andrea, if you have a follow-up question to that, you can go ahead and just unmute and um, ask. Yeah, she just said thank you. Okay, all right. In the chat. Mm -hmm. um, Rev. Jen is asking, what are lipids? Okay, so lipids are fats. Okay. Yes. And um, Lady Tracy is asking if you can elaborate on how to read your blood pressure results, meaning meaning of a bottoms, meaning from top to bottoms. Okay. Um, so before I go into that, um, 
just to know that it's better to have your blood pressure checked by a professional. Now, there are quite a few um, blood pressure machines around that can give you inaccurate readings, all right, for different reasons, how you use it, if you're very anxious before. And so having your, your readings being checked by a nurse or a doctor is the best thing to be able to tell you. There are also uh, what we call um, the different types of machines, all right? So there's the electronic one, and there's the other one that is the best one that we actually use, that those are found in the hospital settings. So the two readings are, the top one is what you call your systolic blood pressure, and the bottom one is what you call your diastolic blood pressure. And these blood pressures are had based on the, the sound that you hear when you actually listen when you do the blood pressure. So the, the, the top one, um, both of them, or one of them being abnormal, puts you at risk of have, having hypertension. But your main concern will be number one is ensure that a nurse does it, a doctor does it, and if you are doing it at home, you ensure you follow the instructions, ensure you are well rested because you can have some super high blood pressure at home and you're not hypertensive. Okay, thank you so very much for that. Do you have a follow-up question, Lady Tracy? Um, yes, I wanted to understand the mean. For instance, how do you know when it's high? For instance, to get a reading of 110 over okay. 70, what does it mean? That's what okay, okay. So once it's more than more than 130 over 80, that is high consistently. So one reading. Right, so two readings like four hours apart or two one day apart, it is high more than 130. The top one more than 130, or the bottom one more than 80, that is high. But like your 110, 70, 120, 70, those are good blood pressures. Okay, thank you. Okay, go ahead and unmute, um, Pastor Lola. Oh, uh, yes, good evening again. Good evening. All right, Dr. Tendai. Yes. Based on my experience, boys have been excluded from the administration of the HPV. Would you like to say possibly why MOH decides on that? So I'm not sure if it's a directly at MOH because the recommendation is that both um, boys and girls can have it. Um, but I'm not sure if it's education in terms of the public education, but both, both boys and girls, the, the virus can affect both persons, boys and girls. Because when they, when, when they make the appointment to come to my institution, they have always asked for girls only. Girl. Okay. And okay. so we were never enlightened that the boys could be included. Yes. So this is an interesting one. Yes. All right, and uh, if no one has a question, I have another. Well, we were told to do the pop test annually, but here I'm seeing every three years. This is also a little surprising. When did this change, please? Okay, um, so there are several recommendations. So there are the pop test, there's the HPV test, um, but for a long time, it has been every three years um, or every three to five years. Um, again, everything will vary based on your symptoms as well. You know, like if you're having symptoms based on your family history, based on your history or sexual history as well, all those things will take into um, consideration um, about when to have your pap test as well. All right, thank you so very much. Thank Go ahead, Pastor Tom. Rep Jen, I think Jade is having some issues with her mic. It keeps cutting out, Jade. Pastor Jen, please go ahead. Yes, thank you so much, Lady Harris. Um, a comment. Um, I am I'm very happy that Dr. Tendai spoke about physical health and she spoke also about emotional health so for a long time we have all concentrated on physical health but little or no attention 
um, was put on our emotional health. And um, what COVID is showing us is that a lot of people who, who we interface with now are struggling. Um, their thought processes, um, they, are, they are discouraged, they are emotionally weak, they are um, stressed out, they are anxious. And um, I don't know if we are prepared enough or if our doctors, I, I don't know, um, I know the doctors may be concentrating more on the physical part of, you know, of, of, of what we present, what our bodies present, um, the, the physical challenges like diabetes and, and hypertension and it, um, skin, skin condi conditions and so, but it's not easy to talk about one's emotional health and I, I want to know, Dr. Tenda, what is the Ministry of Health? Um, what decisions um, are being made in this time? I know as a church, what we, what we should do is, is um, have more forums like this where we, can, where we can have our women discuss these issues surrounding our mental health or emotional health and not feel judged. But what is the Ministry of Health saying about um, giving more attention to our emotional well-being? Okay, so just like you have noticed, um, the, the decrease or the effect of the emotional health on people, um, especially during this COVID time, it has been noticed by the, the health professionals as well. Um, so there are support systems, um, the, the mental teams around. Um, there's increased numbers, um, persons who are being trained um, to, assist this to assist person with, with mental health issues. The thing is, I'm not sure if we have the capacity um, in terms of staff uh, to support adequately um, the mental health of persons. And so that's where the church comes in to assist um, in this manner because um, we don't have have all the resources um, to assist everyone with mental health um, care at all. But indeed, there are things being put in place. Um, there are screening tools, you know, when we come, when persons come, even as a pediatrician, we have screening tools that we ask younger children, <clears throat> how are they doing at school? How is your home situation? Um, and these are done for younger kids and adults as well. So we can screen to see if we see persons with depression, anxiety, and then make necessary referrals or interventions. So again, it has been mental health has been a part of MOH and the, the, the role of the doctors, but since COVID, things has been ramped up, but do we have enough to manage the increased number? No, and hence the community, the church is important to help this emotional pandemic as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Tendai. Uh, and Dr. Tenja, a... if I might add that uh, possibly in this school, there is also the rollout of the happiness clubs okay. that should help with that. Okay, that's good. Okay. I see your hand, Elder Marjorie. There is a question on Facebook I'd like to throw to Dr. Tenda. It says, if you have uh, an, an its directomy, can you still have colon cancer? All right. So a hysterectomy is basically the removal of your uterus or your womb. Your colon is different to your uterus. And hence, even if you remove your, your womb or your uterus, your colon is still present. And once there are risk factors for colon cancer, you can still have colon cancer. Okay, thank you so much for that. Elder Marjorie, please go ahead. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Oh, good night, Dr. Tendai. I had, I developed uh, hypertension. My doctor says I'm not really hypertensive. Reason being, he says my pressure fluctuates widely. So on any given day, it would go up sometimes to 170. 
and I thought that time is at 123. And, um, but that is um, as a result of stress in the work environment. And what I, I, I did something that would cut my hours at work. I, I went on, on early, call it early retirement, because that was important to me. And my pressure was going as high as 190. Wow. Um, and then if I'm rested, it's at 123, it's at 128. So I was able to make that decision. But what I wanted to find out, how do we manage that? Because somehow I was not able to manage it in a way that the pressure would not go so high. Because you work in a stressful environment and um, you need to work. You need to look after yourself and your family. You have to go to work. You know, so I'm just asking what, what, um, advice could you give persons who find themselves in that position? Okay, um, so I'm happy that you see that. And so stress is a very big risk factor for hypertension. So it's very important that we treat the underlying cause. So if our, our, our reason for hypertension is stress, you need to decrease the stress. So how can yeah. we do, you mentioned, you mentioned something, you have to work. So how can you decrease the stress? Okay. Should you be taking um, your breaks? Ensure you take your breaks because you need to realize that um, as much as we need to earn and there are some um, policies at work, right? Sometimes we work through our break time, no break. But if we die, they will say, oh, Sister Marjorie was good, right? So they won't see that you are not taking your break. And so That's you right. as an individual in the jurisdiction of your job need to do things to take care of yourself. Okay, so you don't want, sometimes you will be on the call of duty for the work, which sometimes yeah. you do as doctors, but how is that affecting you, right? Yeah. So you have to look now and see, am I working more than I'm working? Am I not taking my rest? Because if I'm giving you medications and you are still going through the same things, we're going to be in a cycle, right? So take your rest, very important. Avoid um, too much salt, exercise. All right. Um, and if the doctors see the needs for you to take your medication, take it. It's life saving. Right. What you also need to take your precautions to prevent. So overall, we can't kill ourselves for work. We can't. Right. We have to take our risk. And even I'm not sure if I'm able to, I should say even in ministry. Right. Sometimes the pastors, the leaders, they are working, working, working. Right. God will always do his work. Right. He will always find people to do his work. And I don't think he wants us to kill ourselves out because if you kill yourself out, somebody else will come and do it. Oh, and yes. if you think that you are the only person to do it, it means you think you are God. So we still have to take care of ourselves and take rest. You have to do what you have to do. Take your break time one hour. Take your break time. Leave at four o'clock. Especially once it has been affecting you. You have to take care of yourself. Thank you so much. And I would like to just say something else. Um, I'm very happy that um, we are having this discussion, even as people of faith. And, you know, there are some common sense things that you, I would call them common sense, things that we should know and we should be doing, but we don't. And I'm happy we're having this conversation as people of faith because um, we have had some experiences and we have seen, maybe not even in our own church, but around the, um, we have leaders in the church, men, women, here and abroad, who are dying. And the question is being asked of God about the deaths. And I'm looking on, and I'm one of those um, non-medical doctor, Dr. Tendai, and I tell you, I research everything. I, I, every medication, I have to have an understanding. So more often than not, when people come to me with a problem, I'm going to research it and ask questions and try even to give advice. Um, and we are asking God, and, and, and I'm being sincere with this, 
And I'm saying, but we're not looking after ourselves. And if we're not looking after ourselves, our blood pressure is at 190, 180 like mine. And, and thank God I was able to do something. But what I've even started to do recently is to start exercising. Mm -hmm. and, and the exercise, I couldn't do it on my own. And I find no matter how strong we are sometimes, you, we need accountability partners. Yes, definitely. And so what I have done is to do something online. I have okay. to get up. I have to do this exercise. And I'm telling you, my physical body feels so much. I am feeling so much better. Yes, stronger yes. legs, stronger. When you're getting older, to remember you're losing muscles. Yes. You're losing bones. And your bone density is going. You're, it, it, it weakens your structure. We are talking about working for the Lord. We have to be Thank healthy. You to carry the work of the Lord. And so I'm very happy that, um, and I personally think health and wellness in the practical sense that you spoke about tonight and just going into the areas should really be a, a, a theme throughout the year for our lives. I know it is a theme for my life this year and um, just to get healthier. Yes. And though the word of the Lord says it profited little, that little can save our lives. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can save our lives. And so I I just applaud the, the, the women's ministry for bringing this to us. And I'm hoping to see you again on this platform mm -hmm. <laughs> throughout our year. <laughs> because it's a very good conversation we are having. And most of us have different conditions that um you know maybe we could have private sessions or get some help you know for people who are maybe not able to afford it to 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 you know like the health health fears that we have yes. but thank god for this and i and i'm happy that we are having this conversation and um must i say um piggybacking on sister marjorie um, I have had the privy to be aware of quite a few, well, besides being a pediatrician adults who are in ministry, who are sick. Yes. And you need to take care of yourselves. As much as the, you have faith and you are doing God's will, my mantra is, as a man sow it, you reap it. So if That's you sow right. and you eat and you drink and you don't take care of yourself, if the doctors say you have high blood pressure, and you say, Mommy, come by me, go pray. As you <laughs> sow, you will reap. So we can't blame God for the premature deaths. So I think as a body of, of Christ or believers, we need to make sure that we tell a person to take care of themselves so they don't think that, okay, faith is only believing for healing. No, there is healing, definitely, definitely. But there's yes. also a part for us to take care of ourselves better. Thank you so much for that, Doc. I have a question from Facebook. Pastor Lulet, I see your hand is still up. Is it that you have a question? Or it's yes. from before? Yes. Oh, okay. No, Please yes. Uh, just Perfect. to endorse a point that was already made, that um, we really need to take time to rest. We are not doing a whole lot of that. We are not resting. We are just going, going, going. We are not stopping. Find yes. time to enjoy, to be en to engage in things that we enjoy. Yes. Because even for our children, we are trying to get them to cope emotionally and mentally coming out of the, the COVID situation. So we have set aside days to play. Mm -hmm. For example, for me, yesterday was a day of play. Yes, very important. You just put away the books and play. Yeah. And the adults joined in. We were all yes. playing, we were all skipping. And mm -hmm. there are times while you're mm -hmm. teaching, you're just going to stop. So it says, drop everything and play. So okay. wherever you are in the lesson, you're just <laughs> going to stop. And we, we start moving. Just get moving. So we need to adopt some of these things, even though we are adults. And okay. it really <laughs> helps. Yes, it really helps us. Yeah. And yeah. let me, before I, <laughs> before I hand up the floor to you, um, Dr. Tendai, in terms of blood pressure, 
it is believed that the diastolic reading is more important to watch. Could you comment on that, please, than the systolic? Yeah, okay. So the, for those who aren't aware, the systolic is the top one and the diastolic is the bottom one. Um, and definitely, yes, when you have high diastolics, um, it's associated with increased, what we call morbidity or disease, mortality, um, heart disease, et cetera. So yes, having a blood pressure of 120, 90, the 90 is a bad thing. You understand? So indeed, that, that's a true fact. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you for that. That, that helped me as well. Um, that was very, very helpful, that explanation. Thank you for that. I have a question on Facebook, and there is also one in the chat. Facebook says, can you please explain what is the borderline of diabetes? Okay. So the borderline of diabetes is that you're not fully diabetic, but you are getting there. All right. So if you're having like your symptoms of, uh, or no symptoms, and you do what we call a random, just go and check your blood pressure. And it hasn't been more than 200, but it's close to 200. That's borderline. And the good thing is, if you take necessary steps, um, you can prevent yourself from going into full-blown diabetes. All right, so borderline, you are close to there, but you're not there. Exercise, diet, and there's a high possibility that you would not reach the stage of diabetes. Okay. And I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I'm privileged to follow up on that, uh, Sis Yvette. Yes. But, but Dr. Tendai, oh, God help you in answering this question. Okay. <laughs> do you think, based on statistics, do you think that COVID pushes a number of persons in that borderline region? Um, I wouldn't be able to say if it pushes them into the borderline. Um, definitely, I can say that more persons who have diabetes are affected, uh, but I wouldn't be able to say that. At this All right. Point. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I had a follow-up question to that as well. Uh, is there a particular number that tells you when you're on the border for diabetes? Is there a reading? Um, definitely. I'll have to double check it. Um, okay, but, no problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. There's a, a question in the chat that says, my doctor 5. says 5.6. 5. 5. I think okay. we are checking it. All right, great. My doctor says my headaches are caused from migraine. How can I control migraines? How can I control when it triggers? Um, or sometimes when, when it triggers, it's sometimes uncontrollable, noise, stress, sinus. Uh, how can you control a migraine for, for persons okay. that have a migraine? Okay. Um, so migraine is a very common illness, um, headaches. Runs in families. First of all, you need to know what is your trigger. So quite a few times, the trigger of migraine might be lack of rest. It might be dehydration. It might be stress. All right. So if you know your trigger, I have migraine and my migraine is lack of rest. So when once I have migraine and I rest, I am good. So you need to know your trigger. But there are times when you have to go on medications to prevent your migraine from coming on. All right. Again, you have to go to a doctor. And then they will assess you. You're taking your precautions, hydrated, resting, and you're still having migraines. You're taking some um, pain medications. It's not being controlled. At that time, you might need to go on medications now to prevent your migraines from coming. If you know your triggers, avoid it. Basically, if you're avoiding your triggers and it's still coming, you see your doctor and they might have to put you on medications now to prevent the migraine from coming. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. You must need a yes. drink of water now. <laughs> yes, yes, Doc. Doc, the, the, the pre number, which is above 5.6, so it is 5.7 to 6.4. Okay, okay. Being the, the pre. Oh, the pre. Yes. Right. Okay, that was from Facebook. From and 6.5 up would be the full blown. Yeah, okay. that is um, if this fast thing though. Right, right. If, if it is, if it is, if you are right. fasted, yeah. But yes, I don't think they are going to understand the other one. So, uh, well, okay, okay. 
Yes. Yes. Pastor yes. Lulet, I felt like you could have been a doctor in your next life. What I'm a science it? teacher. It's just that I'm not practicing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Are there another, any other questions? On There's another question on Facebook. If you have a hysterectomy, can you still have colon cancer? Yeah, man. I, I, I already um, posed that one to her. We took, we took the Facebook ones, Tracy. Thank you so much. Yes, we, 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 we identified them and gave them to Dr. Tendai already. From Cordella Brown Coins. Yeah. All right. Anyone else on the platform with a question? Uh, a comment? Yes. Comment. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Comment, question. Yes. Comment, Lady Yvette. Yes. Yes, please, Pastor Jen. Go ahead. I am quite excited about the happiness clubs. Can we have one at love and faith? <laughs> Happiness, uh, yes. <laughs> and, uh, faith, faith, Thomas would be that person to guide us. Okay. But we'll talk about that. Yes, please. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you that happiness thing is good. I was on a meeting earlier today and people were just dancing. And I'm talking about just sitting and dancing. And I'm yeah. telling you, the energy that came from that was so relaxing and good. What's so relaxing right on Zoom? Dancing yeah. and having dance competition. <laughs> Clean, <laughs> nice, nice fun. It was just really so refreshing. You know, lift your spirit. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much, Doc. We really appreciate your time. We appreciate those who are on the platform tonight, those on Facebook. Thank you so, so very much. We know we will have you back again because we have more questions, <laughs> but we have a set time for tonight. So um, we will close up here for tonight. I know there's a part two because I, I feel like we need to delve a little bit more into um <laughs> especially the mental matters because that's where a lot of us fall down in keeping it in and bottling it up and so forth and so on uh, all right so thank you everyone uh, we're going to close off now we're going to ask for elder madre to do the vote of thanks for us elder i'm going to ask you to follow up that as well with our closing prayer thank you so much very much thank you again dr tendai remarkable job tonight that you have done here and we are extremely pleased that you are here to take time out of your busy schedule doctors don't have time <laughs> but you were able to take that time out to be here with us and i'm thanking you for that prevention is better than cure will we remember that Will we all remember that? Will we walk away tonight? And just what are the, the one things? And I, I'm just going to ask, I'm going to give the vote a thanks, but I'm just like some a person to type in the chat. What are some of the takeaways that we can walk away with that we are going to start practicing? Just some little things in the chat. They, 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 um, the moderator can maybe speak about them or just mention them, but put them yes. in the chat. Ensure to rest. Than cure. Yes. Um, yes. We heard tonight about non-communicable and communicable diseases. We learned that non-communicable diseases are chronic diseases, like the cancers, those that are genetically transferred, those that are physiological, that those that come out of behaviors, like our eating habits, um, eat and sleep, just go to work, work all day, have a pile of rice and chicken with no gravy, come home, eat another bowl of rice, and then we go to sleep. It is stated here that 41% of persons die each year from the non-communicable disease. And non-communicable disease, that's the 
the, the, I didn't say all of them, but the cardiovascular, the cancers, those that are come out of inactivity, behavior patterns, physiological genetics, of 74% of deaths globally is because of non-communicable diseases. And we see from that, that some can be prevented and others we don't have control. And that's where our faith is mixed with what we do, step out to do. We talk about the communicable, Dr. Tendai spoke about those, being um, those that are, comes from the environment, like those viruses that are airborne, mosquito comes from mosquitoes, the flu, we have had COVID, influenza, um, some of them travels through the air. Those are the communicable diseases that can be, um, we can get help from them through taking of vaccines and, and, and practicing hygiene, proper hygiene. I tell you during the COVID period, it was reported that the flu virus was almost non-existent because that washing of hands and, and carefulness that was taken, wearing of masks, sanitizing, washing was taking place. We have to continue that as a lifestyle. We heard that, um, I know we are averse to, to, to vaccines. I don't know when Jamaicans become so sensitive, but we hear that vaccines, the flu vaccines are good to, to, to be taken as well. And I know some, it's not popular in Jamaica, but a number of Jamaicans take their flu vaccines. We learned all of that today in one sitting. We heard about the role of obesity and um, that, that we don't have to just continue being a slave to obesity. That's where we're going to mix our faith. Because even to take off weight, it is very difficult, but we have to use our faith as Dr. Pendai mixes the practical with the spiritual tonight to show us that out of the scriptures that we read tonight and she has communicated as well, that the Lord does desire for us to be in good health, even as we prosper. Otherwise, mentally, emotionally, financially, and otherwise. Good health is, is a plan for God. Yet we know tonight, for those of us who have conditions that we are working through, that our faith is there to keep us. Thank you, Dr. Tendai, for reminding us. Because things do happen, and even those diseases that are genetically transferred, it's no fault of ours some, um, at times. And so it's not that we are doomed. The Lord does promise us. And it came through in the, in the ministry tonight from Dr. Tendai. And for these notes, these life-saving notes tonight, Dr. Tendai, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you that you have started that dialogue and I believe will, we will continue throughout the year. You talk about hypertension and look at the plot of the devil. You see, once there is an open door, once you have high hypertension, diabetes is going to be attracted to that body. That is hypertensive. You talk about open doors. So here again, uh, Dr. Tendai spoke to us about once you're hypertensive, the diabetes will follow on. Hypertension is known, she says, as a silent killer. When we start feeling those symptoms, we are very ill. So we want to take note tonight. She says, eat more fruits, more vegetables, put more fiber in our bodies. And I will add, stop with the white dumpling, the flour dumpling, the, the white rice. And those things, please cut them out, cut them out. And some of the flour, which are like whole wheat flour, it's really white flour, you know, because they are not real whole wheat. Get the organic food and the white bread. 
those of us, we can get real whole wheat bread. And that two in one, we can prevent both diabetes and hypertension. Um, she spoke about the diabetes, that number two is lifestyle and can pre be prevented again. And um, diabetes type one is, is not preventable. But tonight we have the answer. Visit your doctors, get um, consultation, do your regular checkups. She spoke about the HPV cervical can, um, um, that causes the number one cause of cervical cancers, um, sexually active children. It was very interesting, Dr. Tendai, when you spoke about even the children getting that vaccine between ages nine, I think you said nine, mm -hmm. to 14. And I, you know, some parents are saying, we are Christians and we don't see it that way. But some parents are saying, listen, I am going to tell my 13 and 14 that we can pray about it. They want a decision and I'm not taking a side, but they are exposing their children to tell, teaching them safe sex from very early because in their minds, they are still going out there to do it. That's a hard one for the church, I know. But we also, Dr. Tendai, have to be teaching our little ones what they need to know because they are hearing it on the outside. So thank you for all of that, all of the information you have given, rich information tonight about our health, life-saving notes, life-saving um, doctrine that we have gotten tonight about taking care of ourselves. You touch on the emotional, a very sensitive area, the psychological, very sensitive area. And I just want to say overall, it was just a blessing to have you here tonight. And we want to say a resounding thank you, thank you. You were clear, very clear. It's, you know, sometimes it's not easy to talk to the doctors, but Dr. Tendai, you have done a remarkable job, woman of God. Thank you so much. You're, you're welcome. It was, a, it was a pleasure, you know, to, to give this talk. And what you have, you have to use, because you never know, you know. So while I'm here, it's a pleasure to be used and give information. You know, at church, if any question needs to be asked, you know, I'm a pediatrician. I have lots of pediatric knowledge, but I'm a doctor still, so I know a lot of adult stuff. So any questions at any time, I'm willing to answer and see how I can assist when I can. Thank, thank you, you so much. And at this time, I'll just add, Lady Yvette, that I want to thank the entire women's executive for this um, this meeting tonight, uh, Pastor Lillette, the president, and the entire Love and Faith leadership from Neville and Jennifer Bishop Neville and Reverend Jennifer Owen. We thank our participants, faithful participants that have been with us for two years. Um, it has been really an awesome time with you. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you so much, Elder. We were going to ask you to close out, but you've okay. done so much talking. <laughs> I don't know if you want um, someone else to close in prayer. I can pray. I can pray. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Thank you. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies, Lord. We thank you that you lead us into all truth. Look at tonight. Father, you, Holy Spirit, you are in the midst of this place. How you care about every aspect of our lives. How we eat, how we drink, how we sleep. My God, I want to say thank you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for leading us the way you have. Thank you, Lord, for sensitive leaders that lead us in the place where we are to be, my God. Father, I thank you for, 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 the, for, for the 
what was released to us tonight from the Dr. Tendai. And I pray, oh God, a, a blessing, a special blessing upon her. Lord God, that you expand her and multiply her, Lord, even as she has poured into us tonight, that you will pour into her good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. May you grant her, Lord, the desires of her heart, even those things she desires in the medical fraternity, my God, to see that she wants to have for her children, for the, the whole health sector of this nation. My Lord God, Lord, give her a reward, oh God, a bounteous reward for the awesome work. Lord, we thank you for all persons on this platform. Lord, we pray for health and strength. We pray over every person's bodies tonight. We declare that those who are unwell, we rebuke every malady tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Lord, we come by faith. We come through the power of your word and in the name of Jesus and we declare that we are well. We rebuke diabetes. We rebuke hypertension in the name of Jesus. We rebuke cancers in the name of Jesus. We rebuke cardiovascular diseases. Mm. Rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Ah, Lord God Almighty, we rebuke obesity. Lord God and Lord, we pray tonight that we will find the strength as disciples, Lord. The disciple meaning disciplined one. We will find the strength and the discipline, Lord, to order our body, to subject our body to the spirit of God in even how we eat and care for ourselves, in even how we rest and use wisdom my God in even handling ministry Lord God tonight I pray these things over our people tonight and I give you thanks and praise Lord continue to bless uphold and keep us oh God as we continue to be co-laborers with you in this earth in Jesus name we pray Amen and amen. Lord, I thank you for bringing back our pastors um, to us safe and sound, my God. Lord, I pray a refreshing over Bishop Neville and Reverend Jennifer Owens in the name of Jesus Christ. And let us say amen to that. Amen. 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 Yes, thank you so much. If we have no final words from our president and our pastor, Jennifer Owens, any right. final um, words? Yes, I would just like to thank everyone for joining us tonight again, and to inform you that we will now be meeting once per month instead of twice. So our next meeting date is March 9th. I am looking forward, we are looking forward to meeting you on this platform on March 9th, when we will have one of our champions in the kingdom presenting to us in the person of Dr. Claudette Koch, who is the founder of Signature Woman. I am going to encourage you to invite your family members, friends, co-workers, and other church members to our meeting so that we'll have a packed platform for the woman of God who is very powerful. I thank you for coming. These are my final words. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thanks, everyone. And as she said, we will see you next month, March the 9th. Thank you for joining tonight. God bless you all. God bless you all. Amen.